Today we are making a chocolate cauldron cake inspired by Harry Potter. To make this recipe you will need the following ingredients. 3 quarter cups of flour, 3 quarter cups of sugar, 6 tablespoons of cocoa powder, 1 third of a teaspoon of baking soda, 1 third of a teaspoon of baking powder, 1 third of a teaspoon of salt, 1 teaspoon of vanilla extract, 1 egg, 6 tablespoons of milk, and a quarter tablespoons of vinegar. Awesome! Let's begin. Please preheat your oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Next, we will need to make some buttermilk. Add a quarter tablespoon of vinegar into six tablespoons of milk. You can give it a little bit of a stir, but let it sit for about five to ten minutes. In our third step, we need to mix our dry ingredients. So in a medium bowl, we are going to add our flour. We need to add the sugar. We'll be adding the cocoa powder, the baking soda, the baking powder, and the salt. If you received the Creativity Cooks meal kit, the baking soda, the baking powder, and the salt were all packaged together in one container. As you're mixing your dry ingredients, also use your mixing spoon to just mix these ingredients up as you're going along. By the time you add your cocoa powder to this mixture, you're going to notice that it's just going to be a little bit messy. You want to definitely take your mixing spoon and blend all of these dry ingredients up really, really well so that you don't have any chunks from the sugar or from the cocoa powder. You also don't want to see too much of the whiteness from the flour and from the sugar. You want this entire dry mixture to look like one harmonious mix of ingredients together. If you find that you're getting chunks in there still from the cocoa powder or from the sugar, just use your mixing spoon and break up those chunks and keep on mixing. Also, if there's anything that's just getting stuck to the side of your bowl, if it's a little moist in your kitchen, just again, continue using your mixing spoon and mix this really, really well. In another mixing bowl, we are going to mix our wet ingredients. So we're going to start by adding our egg, followed by our two tablespoons of vegetable oil. We also need to add some warm water to this mixture as well. The warm water was not included in your meal kit. You can use just regular warm tap water, but we'll need about six tablespoons of warm water to add to this mixture. As I'm going along and adding ingredients, I'm just again using another mixing spoon and I'm continually uh, mixing up these ingredients because I want these, especially the egg and oil and everything I'm adding to this, to be mixed together really, really well. Once I've added my vegetable oil and my water, I'm going to continue by adding some vanilla extract to this wet mixture, followed by the buttermilk that I made in step two. This needs to be added to this mixture as well. Before adding the buttermilk, you can give it a little bit of a stir or a little bit of a swirl in the container that it's in. You're going to notice that it's a little bit curdy, as in like it, it kind of looks a little bit like yogurt. Do not worry about that. That is exactly how buttermilk is supposed to look. And once we have mixed up our wet ingredients, we are going to fold them. To fold just means to mix or to add. We are going to add our wet ingredients to our dry ingredients and we are going to use a lot of elbow muscle for this one and a really good mixing spoon and we are going to mix these two ingredients up together very, very well. As you are mixing, you are going to notice that some of the dry mixture is getting stuck to the side of your bowl. Use your mixing spoon and just keep scraping it off. All this dryness that is on the side of the bowl, we want to include it right back into our cake mix and we don't want any of it to be left out. It might be a little bit difficult to stir at first because the mixture just feels really thick and it feels really strong, but I know you guys can all do this. Uh, it's just a little bit of extra work, but we definitely need to mix this up 
we need to get any chunks that are in this mixture we need to to mix them out of here and anything that is getting stuck to the side of your bowl we need to use our mixing spoon and scrape it off and add it back into our cake mix together I think I mix this cake mix for about two to three minutes and I'm not going to fast forward my video I'm going to show you guys this in real time so that as you're mixing and uh, it's getting a little bit difficult and it might not seem like it's mixing as smoothly smoothly sorry as it should be I just want you guys to know that it is a lot of work it takes a little bit of time it takes a lot of mixing uh, there was a lot of stuff that we added to make this chocolate cake mix so we just need to take the extra time that we have and continue to mix it as you may notice I'm also using my hand to just hold on to the bowl sometimes when you're mixing something uh, it can move around and especially if you're using a glass bowl or even if you're using a plastic bowl what you don't want is to be mixing this mixture so hard that your mixture falls to the ground and breaks I've, I've heard that has happened before as well so just definitely use the hand that you are not using to mix to hold on to your bowl keep it secure on the countertop or wherever it is that you're mixing and use your other arm and just continually keep on mixing this just scrape the sides and just keep blending this as best as you can until we have a very 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 smooth chocolate cake mix you can probably start to smell this already it smells really good it's looking really awesome so uh, we're almost there let's let's keep on going with this uh, my mixing is finished right now so I'm going to start getting my baking pan ready for my cake mix you can use butter or margarine to baste your bunt pan I am going to be using some baking spray for my pan and after I spray it in it gets pretty you know pretty good around the corners and the edges but I'm going to just take some paper towel again and just spread this basting spray around my pan I want to make sure that I'm getting the center part of this bunt pan really well with this basting pan as well because I do not want once my cake is mixed I do not want it sticking to the container so once you have your baking pan basted carefully uh, pour your cake mix into this bunt pan the cake mix is a little bit thick and it might be a little bit tricky to hold it and pour it in so if you need to get a parent or guardian to help you with this step please ask them to do that and once you have the entire cake mix poured into your bunt pan let it sit for about five minutes so we can settle some of you have different size bunt pans so this helps a lot and after five minutes we are going to bake this in the oven at 350 degrees for about 35 to 40 minutes while my cake is baking I'm going to go ahead and start making the frosting for this recipe to make this frosting I will need half a cup of whipping cream three and a half tablespoon of instant vanilla pudding a half a cup of milk and one teaspoon of vanilla extract so in a small mixing bowl or measuring cup we need to add the following ingredients we need to add that half a cup of cool whip we need to add the 3.5 tablespoons of vanilla pudding and we also need to add the vanilla extract and since I started with my milk in this bowl if you didn't start in that order you will also need to add your six tablespoons of milk once these ingredients have been added to your container that you're using to mix this with you definitely want to get a mixing spoon and just continually mix these ingredients together as you add them I am now um, you know just adding my cool whip and this is what really thickens this frosting this is what gives it that kind of frothy uh, taste to it so if it's a little bit frozen it's going to be a little bit hard for you to mix it up and blend it in but definitely as you can see I just added my hand to hold on to this bowl because it's a little bit hard to mix and you want to use your mixing spoon and just start whipping all of these ingredients up together really well I'm kind of poking at it a little bit to break up that cool whip 
If you need to do the same, please do. But um, we definitely need this broken up and we need all of this mixture mixed up really well. Another option you can do is use a hand blender to mix this. A hand blender is really awesome because it really gives it that extra frothy uh, look and taste to it, which is kind of what we want because this frosting is going to be added to the center of our bunt, uh, chocolate cauldron bunt cake. And uh, the frothier it is, the better. We do not want this to be thin and we don't want this kind of um, just going all over the place. We want it to sit nicely inside our chocolate cauldron. So uh, once we add our sprinkles and everything to it, it really looks like a chocolate cauldron uh, snack cake. So I'm just using um, my mixer and mixing this up. And once it's finished, I'm going to just set this aside so I can wait because at this time as I'm making this frosting, my cake is still baking in the oven. Another prep step you can do while your cake is baking is also get the chocolate melts ready for your chocolate archway that you are going to need to make to add to your chocolate cauldron cake. To get your chocolate melts ready, add a half a cup of chocolate chips to a microwave safe bowl and microwave on high for about 30 seconds. If after 30 seconds your chocolate chips have not melted, then put them back in the microwave again for about 15 seconds and do this in 15 second intervals until your chocolate chips have melted and look like this. We don't want to microwave these too high to begin with because chocolate burns very easily. Once your chocolate chips have melted, just use a mixing spoon and just mix them up together so that you have a smooth chocolate mixture just like you are seeing in my bowl right now. Once your chocolate has melted, you also will need to use a small Ziploc bag to make a little piping bag for yourself. So use a spoon and scoop the chocolate. It gets pretty messy, so be careful with it. But we want to try to scoop as much of it as we can into our Ziploc bag. This is going to make a little piping bag, which we are going to need to use to make that chocolate archway for your chocolate cauldron cake. The chocolate does get a little bit sticky and it does get a little messy all over the place, but just scrape as much of it off or from your bowl as possible and you can add it to your bag. If you need to use your fingers to kind of scoop some of this off, you are more than welcome to do that as well. Once you have added the chocolate to your bag, please go ahead and seal it closed. And once it's closed, we will need to just gently push all of this chocolate over to one corner of your piping bag. And in the piping bag, we are going to then use a pair of scissors and we are going to cut a small tip off the end so that we can use this chocolate to start drawing with. So in your kits, each of you should have a little archway that's just drawn on paper. We will need to cover that archway with a piece of parchment paper. This is awesome because the parchment paper, you can see right through it. I'm going to use my scissors just to hold this piece of paper down. And now I am going to use this chocolate that I've placed in the piping bag that I've also made and I'm going to trace around the edges of this chocolate archway so that I can basically build my own archway out of chocolate. I went over it about once and there's more chocolate that I have in my bag. The key is you want this to be as thick as possible because it also breaks very easily. And once we have gone over this a couple of times, and we've used all of the chocolate that we have melted and placed in our piping bag, this chocolate archway needs to cool down. You can leave it in a nice cool place to cool for about 15 minutes until the chocolate hardens again, or you can also place this in the refrigerator so that it cools down uh, before you can use it and hardens really well. And about this time, I'm not sure how you guys are cooking, if you're doing it in different intervals, but my cake is finished. So I've removed my cake from the oven and I'm just using a little plastic knife to just check to see if the cake is ready and it is absolutely ready. 
I'm going to let my cake cool for about 30 minutes or so because it needs to be cooled down. But once it's cooled, we want to remove it from the bundt container. And that frosting that we made in step nine, we are going to now add it to the center of our bundt cake and just kind of place it in there just like I am doing right here. Some of you, if you want to cover your cake with this frosting, again, you are more than welcome to do that. This is your creation. This is your design. Like I always say, I want you guys to have fun with this. If you want to do something outside the box, you're more than welcome to. I just love playing with these and it's a lot of fun. I'm going to just add a little bit of sprinkles to the top of my chocolate uh, cauldron cake at this point. And since my archway is ready and it's cooled down, the trick is to try to get your chocolate archway into your chocolate cauldron cake so it sits up like this. If that chocolate archway breaks, don't worry. You can definitely fix it by melting that chocolate just a little bit more. But this is the trick for the week. Can you get this chocolate archway to fit inside or on top of your cake like this? I wanna see who's able to do this. Um, don't forget to definitely enjoy this recipe. Send us your pictures. We wanna see if you guys accomplished this. If you didn't, no worries. It was really, really tricky to do, but still lots of fun. Thank you guys so, so much for cooking with us, and we will see you all next week. Thank you.